Great. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for joining us today. This is the National Alzheimer's and Dementia Resource Center webinar series. And today our webinar is Strengthening the Dementia-Capable Workforce, Dementia Training for Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities Service Providers. The National Alzheimer's and Dementia Resource Center webinar series is supported by the Administration for Community Living. Before we get started, I will turn it over to Erin Long from the Administration for Community Living for a brief welcome. Erin? Hi, everybody. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to all of you for taking time out of your busy day to join us on this clearly very important topic. And I want to thank uh, Lindy Y. Rostack from Memory Lane for joining us and telling their story at Memory Lane and Jennifer Kinney from the Lucas County Board of Developmental Disabilities for talking about what they're doing. Um, we're super excited to hear from you. And with that, I'm going to give it back to you, Sari, so we can get the show on the road. Great. Thank you so much. So today's presenters, as you heard, are Lindy Y. Rostek and Jenny, Jennifer Kinney. Lindy Y. Rostek is a social worker and care consultant at Memory Lane Care Services, who works with caregivers and individuals living with dementia to help them through decision-making, struggles with day-to-day -day challenges, and planning for the future. In her current role, she's primarily responsible for supporting dementia-capable efforts in Toledo, Ohio, and offering the evidence-based BRI care consultation program. She received her BSW from the University of Toledo. Jenny Kinney graduated from Central Michigan University and is a certified therapeutic recreation specialist. She has worked in various aging and developmental disabilities settings, including working directly with individuals in memory care units, long-term care, and assisted living. Currently, she works at Lucas County Board of Developmental Disabilities in Toledo, Ohio, as a provider support specialist and liaison. Her specialty area is working with seniors with intellectual and developmental disabilities with an emphasis in the dementia field. Jenny works with individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families and teams, so individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities can reach their full potential and live a quality life. At this time, I will turn the presentation presentation over to Lindy to begin. Thank you so much, Sari. We really appreciate it and are just uh, delighted to be on here today with everyone. So again, my name's Lindy and I'm gonna be kicking it off today. So again, first I would just like to acknowledge the Administration for Community Living, Department of Health and Human Services, Washington, DC. And we're gonna tell you a little bit about um, one of their funding uh, sources and funding opportunities that they have. So the Administration for Community Living has an Alzheimer's Disease Program Initiative, which is ADPI for short, that supports and promotes the development and expansion of dementia-capable home and community-based service systems in both states and communities. And that's a little bit about the work that we did and what we'll share with you today. And we can go to the next slide, please. And just really briefly, no conf we have no conflicts of interest or disclosures, and we'll move on to the next slide. Okay, so first, I'm just going to share with you today's learning objectives and uh, what you all hopefully take away from today's presentations. Presentation, so you will understand ways to build partnerships within the fields of aging and intellectual and developmental disabilities, which is IDD for short, and we'll refer to that quite often during the presentation, so remember that term IDD, Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. You will also explore methods to provide training on dementia to direct support staff working in the field of IDD, and participants will learn at least three areas of essential content to include in educational se sessions focused on the topic of IDD and dementia. And we can move to the next slide. Okay. So this slide provides an overview of the three Ohio projects that are focused on better living for individuals with dementia. The Northwest Ohio uh, Grant Project, which my co-presenter um, Jenny and I were able to be a part of. There's also the Summit County Grant and the Urban Rural Grant. So the grant goals are to provide quality of life for people living with dementia and IDD, as well as their caregivers while increasing community awareness around dementia capable practices. So the Northwest Ohio project is focused on the greater Toledo area in the Northwest corner of the state. 
And that grant started in October of 2018 and was granted a one-year no-cost extension and ended in September of 2022. The Summit County grant was, is administered by the Summit County Public Health Department. Their grant started in October 2019 and was given a, no, a one-year no-cost extension. So the Urban Rural Project started in August 2020 and is named so because of its focus is on expanding dementia-capable communities within underserved urban and rural areas in Ohio. The urban piece is occurring in the Cleveland area, while the rural piece occurs in the southeast in southeast Ohio. The urban rural grant also received a no-cost extension. So the grants include many educational components and many other components as well that we won't get into detail about today. But one of the educational components um, consists and is aimed at increasing awareness around IDD and dementia. Another one of the ADPI grant requirements is they, they include a third party evaluation for our efforts. Miami University's Scripture Ontology Center has served as the evaluators of the Northwest Ohio Grant and the Urban Rural Grant Project as well. The evaluation for the Summit County Grant is provided by an organization called Smile Minded Works Incorporated. And we'll go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So within all three grants, the project leads saw a need in the community. They connected with developmental disability, which is DD, county boards, and IDD providers, and asked if they'd be willing to partner on this important project. We found that it's important to understand how your IDD systems work within your state and community to identify partners and experts in the field. For example, in Ohio, there is a statewide board of DD, and each county in Ohio has a board of DD along with their provider network. Therefore, we included our county boards of DD in these projects. And we can go to the next slide. So in all three grants, the approach was to work with multiple organizations to provide training on IDD and dementia. All three lead organizations and partners recognize the importance of bringing experts to the table to provide understanding the needs of individuals with IDD and dementia, caregivers in the systems who support them. Leadership, input, and guidance was provided by DD County Boards and IDD providers to shape educational content and delivery methods to ensure trainings were relevant and practical. My co-presenter, Jenny, is going to talk in much more detail about this later in the presentation. And we can go to the next slide. So along with building these strong partnerships within our own projects and with our grant partners and in our communities, we also started to build a strong partnership across all three Ohio grant projects, which we will also tell you much more about. And we can move to the next slide. Okay, so what did we do? And we can move to the next slide and we'll tell you what we did. So here's where the stars come in, in the theme of our presentation. We let many shine throughout the facets of our project. So coming from the aging field at the beginning of the project, we just felt we had so much to educate the IDD systems on about dementia. It turned out that we had so much to learn from the IDD systems, specifically about the clients they serve, how their systems work, including professional and family member involvement, and what is most important to them in their support systems regarding dementia care. After learning a great deal from each other, we were to collaborate to build and offer, offer effective trainings. Among the three Ohio projects, Partnerships with DD and county boards and IDD providers were established and grew. In addition, projects began working together to share what we had learned. We invited each other to attend IDD and dementia education trainings. We shared curriculums and manuals and sought feedback for refinement on programs and incorporated those suggestions. Lastly, we built a safe place full of positivity and teamwork. There were no Okay, thank you. I'll try to take up where she left off. So I'm gonna kind of repeat a little bit, providing the ongoing support and teamwork. 
Among the three Ohio projects partners with the DD County Boards and the IDD providers, we were established and grew. In addition, projects began working together to share what we had learned. We invited each other to attend the IDD and Dementia Education trainings, shared training curriculum and manuals, sought out feedback for refinement to programs and incorporated suggestions. Lastly, we built a safe place full of positivity and teamwork. There were no bad ideas, except for maybe a couple of them, no, but we had a part of the process and that helped learn from each other. Next slide, please. So what did we learn? Okay. We found there are opportunities for aging system and ID systems to work together at many levels. We were also delighted to find that the IDD systems were interested and open to education on dementia and wanted the education to expand into the community. So training on IDD and dementia can also help with workforce challenges. Professionals from both fields were interested to learn about IDD and dementia and incorporate their new skills into their roles. Next slide, please. Sustainability. Each ADPI grantee sites were asked to create a coalition to ensure community-wide participation and expansion of resources in dementia-inclusive efforts with the focus on supporting individuals, with the IDD and at risk of developing dementia. All three projects have community collaboration mechanisms through which they are engaging key communities, service organizations that are interested in improving the dementia capability of their own organizations, in addition to the greater community. The Northwest Ohio Grant has a dementia coalition and the Summit County Grant at a dementia and brain health subcommittees to its already existing senior independent living coalition. And the Urban Rural Project has an advisory task force. Typically, these group meet quarterly to discuss the progress of grant activities and provide input. Once the grant ended, coalitions and task groups are designed to continue the work. In addition to joining coalitions and task groups, DD County Boards and IDD providers attended Train the Trainer education sessions, which help sustain programming and continue education in post grants. Lastly, in Ohio, Cleveland Heights, Toledo, and Summit County have joined the Dementia Friendly America Network of Communities, for dementia friendly communities are equipped to support and engage people living with dementia and their care partners and increase awareness about helpful and assistive resources and services available to them. Next slide. And it looks like my partner, Lindy, is back on with us. So I'll pass Hi. it back over. I'm so sorry, everyone. And Jenny, thanks for stepping in. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about program outputs. And again, I apologize. Okay, so in a little bit here, Jenny's going to be jumping back on and we'll be providing you with more detail about the Dementia Friends programs and in-depth trainings with expert Dr. Philip McCallion and how these programs met our need to educate individuals on the topic of IDD and dementia. For all three Ohio projects, we incorporated the Dementia Friends for IDD sessions into our projects with, just, with a total of 54 sessions and was delivered to 1,277 attendees. In the Northwest Ohio project, a Dementia Friends session was created for individuals with IDD. Again, Jenny will go into more detail about the programs. This program was delivered to individuals with IDD four times with a total of 70 attendees. Lastly, we brought in expert Dr. McCallion to offer in-depth trainings on IDD and dementia. Dr. McCallion delivered 13 sessions. 306 attendees participated from the Northwest Ohio Project and 156 attendees participated from Summit County. So we were able to partner in Northwest Ohio and Summit County on those special offerings. 
One of the trainings Dr. McCallion offered was a train the trainer. In Northwest Ohio, individuals from the Lucas County Board of DD offered the basics of IDD and dementia training four times during the grant period with a total of 171 attendees. And we can go to the next slide, please. So for all three Ohio projects, we saw positive impacts from the IDD and dementia trainings. Overall, we saw increased knowledge about IDD and dementia, improved attitudes about people living with dementia, increased confidence in interacting and serving people living with dementia, and individuals also felt they could respond with more understanding to individuals living with IDD and dementia. And we can move to the next slide, please. So with the help of our program evaluators, we were able to collect feedback from attendees for our programs. We pulled a few of the most impactful takeaways attendees had from our IDD and dementia trainings. And I'm just gonna read the first bullet um, takeaway that was a quote from one of our program attendees. So it is possible for a person to live well with dementia. There are practical steps that be, can, can be taken by caregivers to accommodate the needs of persons with dementia and IED. These steps are doable and make a difference in a person's life. So as you can see, there were some pretty significant takeaways from these programs. And we'll move to the next slide, please. So as you have, as you have heard, we have had wonderful, wonderful outcomes and impacts in offering these programs. I'm so excited to pass it over to Jenny as she will share with you the importance for these trainings, how they were built, what programs were offered, and the content that was included in the trainings. And Jenny, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you, Lindy. It is my honor to be here. So our why, we took a look at why are we going to do this? So as we know, the ID population is living longer, and the need to look at dementia in this group is evident. We know those with Down syndrome have a risk of Alzheimer's due to chromosome 21. Yet, Alzheimer's is not inevitable for those with Down syndrome. We noticed the need for training to educate how signs of dementia may appear earlier than the general population and how they can be exhibited differently. So for example, someone with Down syndrome may have new onsets of seizure, incontinence, or mobility issues in the beginning of developing dementia. But in the typical aging, these symptoms may appear later in the disease. So when staff and family members notice behavioral changes, many believe the individuals are being difficult or they're trying to manipulate the situation. We know there are many reasons for behavior changes, but the idea of dementia was not really looked at or thought of as a possibility. The goal was to break down misconceptions and to look at possible reasons for the difficult behavior. We looked at this as an opportunity and it allowed us to explore IDD and dementia and what type of trainings could be provided. Next slide, please. Expert advice on program content. As you heard Lindy talk about Dr. Phil McCallion, we sought the experts. And so Dr. McCallion from Temple University is an expert in the IDD and the dementia field. In addition to offering a series of in-depth IDD and dementia trainings, Dr. McCallion also provided us additional feedback on other programs we offered and recommended valuable resources. We also utilize national resources for organizations such as the National Down Syndrome, the National Task Group, which is your NTG on Intellectual Disabilities and Dementia Practices, and the NADRC Dementia and IDD Resource. You'll find these links for these resources on our resource slide at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. In the beginning, to all grant partners, we discussed some of the language differences within the system. So we gathered the Ohio County Board of DDs and providers. So for example, in the IDD system, our paid providers for home and adult system are known as direct support professionals. We'll talk about that as DSPs. Family members in the DD world are natural supports. In the aging system, a caregiver 
is a family member and a paid provider, paid help, is called health aid. The IDD system in Ohio has Medicaid waivers. This allows the individuals with IDD to attend work, vocational habilitation, adult day service programs, and transportation to live within the community. And they use paid supports. Even if an individual is living with a family member, they may still utilize day services and DSP for help in the home. But one of those challenges is the high turnover rate. So a challenge is the lack of education and tools to provide appropriate services within this population, especially those with Down syndrome. We need to be more aware of the signs and symptoms due to the link with chromosome 21. There are several genes on chromosome 21 that are involved in the aging process. So this may contribute to the increased risk of Alzheimer's disease for this group. Studies show that people with Down syndrome in their 50s show Alzheimer's effect by 30%. Once they are in their 60s, this becomes closer to 50% of the people with Down syndrome. Alzheimer's disease is not inevitable in persons with Down syndrome. But with these signs showing earlier and different, the education and training is vital for those working in the IDD field. With the challenge of high staff turnover, trainings need to be offered on a regular basis. Next slide, please. We're going to take a little bit deeper look here. The training and program methods vary. We analyze the audience that would be participating and try to gear the delivery method that may work best. As with any training, we would evaluate the session and adapt the methods as necessary. <clears throat> we utilize various methods for training for in-person and virtual sessions. We found that smaller groups were able to effectively utilize more interactive training methods such as breakout rooms, if it was virtual, or live Q&A. Like in webinars today, participants use the Q&A feature and were placed on mute. Within many of the trainings and programs, case studies were involved. We incorporated it into the training to receive feedback from the audience and have discussion on the content. In the future, we hope to continue and expand on what we have started, add other ways to provide education trainings, and we are looking to add micro trainings and online self-paced courses as a method for program delivery to meet the needs of the DD County boards and providers. Another valuable method can be helpful in the field of this IDD is called on-floor training, which can be offered as on-the-spot training for the IDD providers when they encounter challenging behavior or bring it to the administration for advice. Next slide, please. Trainings provided, and we'll keep on going to the next slide. Thank you. So we're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive into the in-depth virtual training that we received from Dr. McKellen at Temple University. We worked with Dr. McKellen and he offered a robust series of in-depth trainings on IDD and dementia. These trainings took place during COVID-19 and were offered virtually. The first training that we had was the basics of IDD and dementia. This was very powerful and informative. It was developed for direct support professionals and others who are involved in the day-to-day -day care. It addresses the basics of dementia, ways to communicate, how to modify the environment, and how to look at challenging behaviors in a new way. With Dr. McCallion's basics of IDD and dementia, train the trainer session he shared many methods of training that were beneficial to all. Using some of these methods helped engage the participants of our own audience in the sessions we are presenting on IDD and dementia. The next training Dr. McCallion offered was symptoms and identification and assessment. This focused on identifying screening tools and assessments that can be used. How to involve the team working with the individual and how to share information with the medical team. Redesigning day, employment, and living situations for a person with IDD and dementia was targeted for the first line managers 
and administrators and advanced dementia care for individuals with IDD and dementia was targeted at care managers and health support professionals. We then wrapped up the training with an Ask the Expert. This session where the participants submitted specific IDD and dementia questions ahead of time. Dr. McCallion was able to answer those during the session and took a deep dive into the questions that were submitted. So this leads us to the next slide on dementia friends. Next slide, please. Dementia Friends. You can see we have Dementia Friends USA, Dementia Friends Ohio, and Ohio Council for Cognitive Health. Dementia Friends is an international dementia public awareness and call to action initiative. It helps change the way that people think, act, and talk about dementia, one person at a time, one community at a time. Dementia Friends is a great door opener. It's short, about an hour, covers the basics of dementia and the IDD, including incidents, risk factors, tips for communication, daily care, along with how to be helpful for community resources. The open door with Dementia Friends then leads to a more in-depth training such as those that Dr. McCullion helped us with, as well as our behavior intervention programs, which we'll talk a little bit about later. At the end of each session, dementia friends are asked to consider taking at least one action, big or small, out into their community. It could be checking in on a neighbor, telling others about dementia, making your home or workplace more dementia friendly. Each action counts. In this grant, we focused on the two that you see up on the slide, dementia friends for intellectual and developmental disabilities. This version of Dementia Friends was developed in 2019 with support from the ACL grant and with resources from Dr. McCallion and the National Down Syndrome Society, the NTG, and Dementia Friends Minnesota. This training benefits professionals, including but not limited to our service and support administrators, caseworkers, DSPs, family and friends. The next session was Dementia Friends for Individuals with Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. This was developed in 2021. The Northwest Ohio Grant Partners identified the need and opportunity to create a version of Dementia Friends for Individuals Living with IDD. The vision was to help individuals better understand and support friends and coworkers, roommates, and family members showing changes due to dementia. Additionally, we worked with NTG and Dementia Friends Massachusetts on the development of this version of Dementia Friends. Next slide, please. These two additional trainings offered a variety of tips for professionals and was aimed at service and support administrators, caseworkers, DSPs, family members, and friends. Many of the grant partners offered these trainings to staff and providers. We also offered a train the trainer version of these programs as well. Let's take a look at behavioral interventions when caring for someone with dementia. The current research about dementia care, effective practical strategies, and useful resources in identifying causes of common behavioral symptoms and effective interventions. IDD and dementia specific case studies were incorporated into this behavioral intervention training. What we learned from this program is that the person with dementia is not giving you a hard time, they are having a hard time. And that we also know that behavior is a form of communication. We also utilized ACL's brain health materials and offered brain health, the basics. This training is a practical presentation that helps people learn how to reduce the risk Related to brain health, this program provides information on brain health, medication, and useful resources. We found that this program was very applicable and professionals for the IDD as well. Next slide, please. Thank you. Participants 
of the training sessions, we're able to walk away with the knowledge in three different areas. One, the basic content of dementia, what it is and what causes it. So we discuss a various types, for example, Alzheimer's and Lewy body dementia. We looked at the signs and symptoms, especially the difference of early signs in the IDD population and how dementia can affect one's daily activities. Two, we looked at communication strategies and skills used in day-to-day -day care. We talked about slowing down, pausing, wait for that response. Go with the flow. Don't argue and don't correct. Maintain good eye contact. Be at their eye level. Get down and look and use visual cues to help. Three, applying person-centered care including changes, modifications, to provide the best care possible. Our focus here was to maintain safety and comfort and allow aging in place by looking at lighting, color contrast, noise level, and using signage. We found that small changes in the words we choose and changes in the environment can make a huge difference for our individuals. Next slide, please. Life changes. This is wonderful. After presenting dementia friends to our IDD providers in Lucas County, we had providers reach out for additional training sessions. We were able to take some of Dr. McCallion's trainings and adapt them for the needs of specific individuals living with IDD and dementia. And we came up with a few solutions on how to assist staff working with them. Positive feedback came to us after some of the changes we made to the individuals in the IDD dementia environment. Signs were added to bedrooms and bathroom doors for visual cues. Night lights were added to the bathroom to help the individual feel more comfortable walking into the bathroom. Staff also learned while cooking or doing other chores with the get together that stopping the task, getting down to eye level and looking the individual to communicate effectively was very helpful. The most requested topics that we had from our providers were regarding behavioral issues, environmental concerns, and communication strategies. Next slide, please. Couple stories of success. With our Dementia Friends for Individuals with IDD, in Lucas County, Ohio, we were able to present the Dementia Friends for Individuals with Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. Both sessions for the advocacy groups were well received. Many participants had questions and stories to share about family members or friends with dementia. One participant in particular shared she had a friend who acted confused and would show up in her apartment late in the evening hours. After the session, she said that now she sees some possible signs and symptoms of dementia. She will share them with her staff to help her assist in talking to her friend's staff. Then we presented those individuals that attend an adult day service program. This training was well received. They are now volunteering at an adult day center for people with dementia. It has been reported that the volunteers and participants are all enjoying the experience. Thanks to the Dementia Friends training, it has opened the door for new possibilities and new volunteer opportunities. Next slide, please. Our next steps. Well, this work continues to grow and expand. Another ACL, ADBI grant is taking place in Ohio to expand trainings, education, which will take place in hospital settings. In Ohio, the Department of DD unveiled the CARE Toolkit from the Gerontological Society of America at the Ohio Association County Board's Fall 2023 Conference. The IDD population is also being added to the CARE Toolkit to address brain health in adults with intellectual developmental disabilities. We are fortunate in Ohio that many DD County Board staff have been trained and are using the NTG screening tool to help detect early signs of dementia. And lastly, 
As we continue this work, we are uncovering more needs and opportunities for the IDD and aging fields to work together. The possibilities are endless with this partnership. Next slide, please. Here's a list of the resources, some of which we highlighted throughout the presentation. And we encourage you to take a look at these wonderful resources that we have. And the next slide, please. Here's our contact information. You have Lindy's and myself, um, and we've also included Sally Bowman, who's been very instrumental in this program. And then one more slide, please. Thank you so much for joining us. We had a great time being here, and it's been such an honor. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jenny and Lindy. We're glad that Lindy was able to jump back on. Uh, those technical challenges can be frustrating. So we're happy that everyone is back for the question and answer session. As a reminder, you can ask your questions in the Q&A section of the webinar platform. We have quite a few questions that are coming in. Just so you know, um, we will send the slides once they are um, accessible and compliant for those with disabilities. So please uh, sit tight for those. And then Cameron, can you scroll back to the uh, resources slide so people can take a look at those as we're doing the questions? Thank you so much. And I will go ahead and um, get started with the questions. So the first question was um, asking if you included people living with dementia in the creation of the program. And if so, how many and how did you find them? Jenny, if you're okay, I was going to take this one and then I was going to have you, I was going to include you in the question as well, because you are part of the piece of that. Um, but with the creation of these programs, we really heavily relied on our experts, um, such as Dr. McCallion. But as far as individuals living with dementia, um, we did, for one of the programs within Dementia Friends, we did pilot sessions with the individuals living with dementia and those with IDD, and also pre presented it to um, a group called Salute, which I was gonna have Jenny talk about. It's an advocacy group of individuals with IDD and we got their feedback on the, the content. And then we were able to um, make any adaptations and, and move forward that way. So Jenny, I don't know if you'd add anything to that of how we, how we utilize those folks to help shape our programs. Um, actually, Lindy, I think you handled it exactly the way it should have been handled there. Thank you so much. <laughs> So salute, just to let you know about that group though, that was a self advocacy group here in Lucas County, Ohio, which is in the greater Toledo area. And when we did present, thank you. Yes, they gave us some input and a lot of them shared mostly like, oh, my grandmother has dementia or this. And they were able to understand the content a little bit more. And we took what some of their wordings were to add it into. And we also, Lindy, if you want to talk a little bit about the videos that we created and that, since you were very instrumental in that, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Just to add before we get into other um, questions, but um, we also took some of Phil's content in our finishing and haven't quite yet, but, um, you know, releasing to the public some short animated videos from the content um of those trainings so then those could be used for like for example those on the floor trainings we talked about um so we did that as well um and we're able to do a lot of really neat things with this project so sarah i think we'll take the next question great thank you so much mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit more of the takeaways the things that you learned from the basics of idd and dementia training um, what were the highlights and what are the things that you think people should focus on if they do this kind of training in the future? Jenny, do you want to talk about it or you want me to start? I, I can start, then you can jump in, please. Sounds so, great. Sounds great. Yes. Yeah, so some of the takeaways to me is very much important with the environment. Many of our individuals who live with roommates, it can be very loud and noisy two different TVs going on at a time, just that background noise. So we talked about looking at the environment. I would definitely say that would be the first one. And also about communication and behaviors, be, you know, 
behaviors can be a way of communicating. Those individuals that have a difficult time in being able to communicate, um, what are the other signs that we're looking for? And so that was very helpful. And we just kind of broke it down to the needs. And so we would do, we wouldn't do a whole training at once. Sometimes we'd break it down by going in and hearing what their needs were, taking a look at the environment. So I would say those were the biggest takeaways that we have found and the ones that I have worked with personally. Lindy, do you have anything you want to add? You know, it's interesting because I think the environmental piece of it stuck with me the most. Um, and and it just went into so much detail of looking at contrast, you know, and, you know, as far as I, you know, my work experience working in an adult day center um, and serving individuals with IDD, we were able to incorporate a lot of the education and content we learned from these trainings into our adult day center, looking at, um, you know, modifying different things. So that was a, a huge takeaway, looking at environmental uh, factors as well. I think we can go to the next question, Sarah. Great, thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about how you identify people that need the training, especially people who may not know that they need it or getting to the point that they might need it? I think, um, and I remember seeing this question and I kind of put some thought to it. So as far as most of the trainings that we did go, uh, or, you know, present and do within the grants were geared toward a uh, professional and at times family caregivers. So it wasn't necessarily geared toward um, the individual that might be experiencing signs of dementia. Um, so we were able to identify um, by working with our county boards and IDD providers to see what kind of training they need to strengthen their understanding of dementia. And we worked with that from there. And then we just kind of continued to spread that across all three projects and different communities, what the need was. Um, so we kind of just were working and gearing towards professionals um, and expanding that education that way. There were a handful of family caregivers, um, but a lot of those folks were really interested to learn about IDD and dementia because um, they had concerns of maybe their adult um, child that they were caring for and had concerns about as they were aging, they wanted to learn more about IDD and dementia. Jenny, I don't know if you'd add anything to that as well. I would just add one more thing is because we offered this training and we had such a great success when Dr. McKellen came, we, we didn't just offer it once, we offered it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And our larger agencies here in the Lucas County area and neighboring counties attended so what was nice is they were able to identify individuals that they had concerns about and brought mm -hmm. us into the day programs um, or the home health area. Like if someone needed HPCs, homemaker personal care, and they were having issues, uh, then they reached out to us. So that was kind of nice. We got the introduction that's out there and now they're reaching out to us a little bit more. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, so another question. So beyond applying for and receiving funding for the ADPI grant, can you talk a little bit about the process of getting started with a project like this? Um, so for people who you know are working in organizations that are thinking we could really use this, what are some things to think about as they're getting started? Jen, here if I start. You take it, Lindy. Okay, I'll go ahead and get started. I think a couple things to get started, of course, knowing your community, um, knowing if, you know, you're in a state where there are county boards um, and starting it, maybe a conversation with, with them um, in addition to IDD providers um, and seeing what the need is in the community um, and kind of just starting there and connecting, you know, what is you know, their understanding of uh, the incidence of dementia and um, kind of just starting a conversation. I think it was easy for us in these projects because ACL said, here's this target population. We want you to expand education. Um, and how are you going to do that? And kind of just said, um, you know, find partners that are interested and willing to work. Um, but if you're in your own community, see what resources are available, see who's out there providing care. And 
as we shared within this presentation, we were really surprised and happy with how um, open and willing both uh, aging and IDD fields were willing to work together to uh, start with this work. So maybe just starting with a conversation. Um, Jenny, I don't know if you'd add anything. Mm, I think you got it, Wendy. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. So this, this is one where you might need to kind of think about really this delivering education and training about people living with dementia versus the population that is living with dementia and IDD. Can you talk about any of those specific differences in approaches? What are the differences when you enter a group that is living with dementia and also has IDD and training providers to work with that group versus mm -hmm just training providers to work with people living with dementia. So um, whoever wants to jump in first, feel free. Jenny, maybe you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when we approach our providers and what we looked at was really emphasizing the fact that this could start earlier. The signs and symptoms are gonna be different. So we really focused on that with our providers because a lot of times we would hear from our DSPs, they're just trying to manipulate the situation. They're just refusing to do this. They used to always do it. So what we would do is we'd go back and we would look at them and help work through that process. So we would talk about, okay, what did they do a year ago? So our training focused with the DD providers was the fact that it's not uncommon that you might see it earlier than you would the general aging. And that was the hardest thing for them to understand at, at first because they're like, well, they're too young. So the whole education process was basically helping them understand that it could be earlier and it could be different. And Sari, what was the other question part of that question, please? It was just about how you, um, what are the differences in the training between just people living with providers who are just dealing with people who are living with dementia versus those who are working with a population that's living with dementia and IDD. Lindsay, do you have anything else you want to add? Because I'm looks like you want to jump in. Um, I you did a great job covering that. I don't think I have anything else to add with that one. Yeah, okay. we can go to the next question. Okay. So um, you mentioned that environment can be a big factor in how we work with people living with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So are there any key red flags that people should be looking for in the hmm. environment? Okay, so I would say yes. And partly because I always think of the individuals that were able to use the restrooms or showers on their own or going and working in the kitchen. That's when we started seeing the back and they would be afraid to go in. And so some of the environments that we looked at were adding lighting. We would add the contrast for the toilet seat. And white on white, it can be very scary. So we would say, get a red toilet seat and the toilet seat lid to put on so they know that's where they're that, that, the toilet they need to use. We added technology. Technology is amazing out there now to help with cooking and different forms like that. We also looked at, can we do remote blinds to close them a little earlier as the sun's going down? So we were just able to go in and take a look at the environment and offer suggestions that was given to us and explain to them that it's better to start it early once they see the signs than waiting till it's too far um, with the fear of going into rooms or fear of stepping into a shower. Is there any other part of that question that I need to jump into, Sari? No, that sounded great. That was great. Okay. okay. So we have a few questions that came in about um, how you have been able to keep or retain your um, staff that work with the IDD population, especially those that are aging and maybe developing um, dementia, recognizing that there's high turnover, that it's a very challenging job. Are there any tips that you can provide for others that are on the call and working in a similar environment? 
Well, <laughs> retaining DSPs is difficult even if they don't have dementia. And that is a very hot topic in here in the state of Ohio. Mm. If we're looking at those working for those with the aging in the IDD um, and include the dementia, we just try to offer more resources, support that we are there for them. We found that agencies are more willing to talk to us and offer more training. Um, they are themselves become trained the trainers so that they can offer it as well. It is unfortunately a very high topic just for turnover rate as it is across the national country. So sorry, I don't have too much more to offer on that one. Yeah, I think it's a challenge for many people. Lindy, do you have anything that you want to add? I don't think so. And Jenny is really the expert on that and mm -hmm. she did a job, I thought so. A lot of people are asking if you are going to be offering your trainings outside of your um, grant project. Are they available online? Are you planning on doing any train the trainers for those outside your area? Any plans for that that you can talk about or thinking about it? We do have in the resources, link in the resources, the um, basics of IDD and dementia is available to the public that Dr. Philip McCallion did. So it's about an hour and a half uh, training um, and it's linked in the resource slide. So take a look at that. Um, as far as the other programs go, we did offer that during our grant periods um, quite frequently as train the trainer sessions. So some, you know, Jenny and myself, including other grant partners, um, do periodically offer the, the trainings. Um, in addition to that, we were recently just awarded a uh, another round of ADPI funding. So we're going to be looking to do some more training on IDD and dementia and education. So if folks are interested in learning more, feel free to shoot me an email. Again, I'm Lindy. And um, if you're interested, I'd be happy to connect you with what resources are available and what we might have coming up in the near future. Great. Thank you. And yeah. uh, Cameron, if you're able to, can you um, go back to the resources slide one more time so that people can see that basics of um, IDD and dementia training? Um, and since you have the slides open, if you are able to copy and paste that link out to everyone, that would be great. It's the Dr. Philip McCallion one. Thank you. So Cameron will send that out in the chat to the audience so everyone has it. Um, as a reminder, we will be sending the slides out to everyone when they are made accessible. We are working on that right now. That came up again, and I'm just going to see if there's any last questions we can answer here. We just talked about training. Are there any evaluation data and outcomes that you weren't able to share that you want to add at this time at all? Lindy and Jenny, if someone was asking about that, about the impact that you've made. Hmm. And if not Jenny, that kind of evaluation data, if you have any anecdotes, that's fine too. Anything that can kind of explain what this is doing for those um, that are taking the training. Yeah, absolutely. Um, specifically with Dr. McCallion's trainings, um, we did, it was, it was even, um, we did a, a, a baseline and then kind of a follow-up um, survey with the folks who attended. And we actually asked folks, um, you know, how did you incorporate these trainings into your organizations? Um, did you bring up any changes you're interested in um, to upper management or administrators? And I don't have the, the data in front of me, um, but basically what folks said who had attended is that changes were being implemented into their organizations. Um, they were able to take, you know, things that they learned through Dr. McCallion's trainings and, um, and do things like incorporate them, like environmental changes or incorporating more education on dementia into their agencies. And um, we were able to collect some of that information with the follow-up surveys that we did with these groups. So it was very impactful. And Jenny, I don't know if you'd add anything from your perspective. I think you did a great job. Thank you, Lindy. Thank you. 
Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone. We've reached um, pretty much the end of our time here. Thanks for joining us today at the National Alzheimer's and Dementia Resource Center webinar series. We hope you'll join us again on February 6th when we host the webinar, Finding the Way in Dementia Care, Use of Care Navigators for People Living with Dementia and Their Caregivers. Information uh, was already sent by email to our large listserv, and we'll send another reminder as well. I'm going to send out in the chat the email address you can use if you need to reach us with any questions. Um, it's nadrc-webinars at rti.org. Um, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.